Hi, my name is Maya Horowitz from Checkpoint Research, and I'm happy to welcome you to our eight-part video guide on how to secure the remote workforce in the new normal. In this first episode, we'd like to talk about the new trends in cyber threats that were triggered by the outbreak of the coronavirus. As we have all witnessed, the COVID-19 pandemic has had a dramatic effect on virtually every aspect of our lives since it came on the scene in late 2019. The way we live and work has been transformed practically beyond recognition. And one of the major changes is, to put it simply, life on Earth has gone online. And this change wasn't gradual. It happened virtually overnight. Businesses of all sizes and shapes around the world have had to adapt to the speed of light and to make significant infrastructure changes so their employees could work from home. And while companies, and especially their IT and security teams, have been forced to adapt to the new normal, threat actors have been taking advantage of this situation, evolving their skills and methodologies to exploit the vulnerabilities of this new hybrid world. A variety of actors with diverse motivations, criminal, political, or espionage-related, have been developing malicious new strategies for breaching corporate networks so they can more easily steal valuable business data and disrupt operations. We at Checkpoint Research have been paying close attention to these malicious activities, and here are some trends that we have observed over the past few months. Trend number one, the proliferation of COVID-themed attacks. COVID-19 has prompted a great increase in proliferation of malware attacks that leverage social engineering techniques and exploit our all-consuming preoccupation with virus. Thousands of corona-related domain names were registered, many of which have been used for scamming unsuspecting victims. Some domains were used to launch emails that claim to sell ultimately fake COVID-19 vaccinations or medication, and others for various phishing campaigns or for distributing malicious mobile applications. As happens often during the holiday or during other sales events, scammers have also been offering merchandise with special coronavirus discounts. What's more, hackers are targeting countries suffering very high rates of infection, as they are perceived to be the most vulnerable and most susceptible to attack. For example, there was a widespread targeted coronavirus-themed phishing campaign that targeted Italian organizations, hitting over 10% of all organizations in Italy with the aim of exploiting concerns over the growing cluster of infections in the country. Trend number two is given by the explosive growth in the use of Zoom. During global lockdowns, the use of the video conferencing app Zoom skyrocketed from 10 million daily meeting participants in December 2019 to over 300 million in April 2020. Cybercriminals have been leveraging the popularity of this app, as well as others like it, to launch phishing attacks. According to Checkpoint Research, Zoom-related domain registration and fake Zoom installation programs in particular have been behind a major increase in cyber attacks. Checkpoint Research worked with Zoom earlier this year to fix a potential vulnerability that could have allowed hackers to join a meeting uninvited. And recently, our team has also helped to mitigate the risk associated with a potential security issue in Zoom's customizable vanity URLs feature, one that could have allowed hackers to send Zoom business meeting invites that appear to be associated with a particular Zoom user with the aim of inserting malware and stealing data or credentials from that user. The risk of ransomware attacks grows as employees are increasingly using their personal devices for work and accessing the corporate network over an insecure connection. As if that's not bad enough, cybercriminals have also started using a new ta tactic in the ransomware playbook called double extortion. This new tactic first appeared in early 2020. What this involves is that prior to encrypting the victim's databases, attackers extract large quantities of sensitive commercial information and threaten to publish it unless a ransom is paid. This puts targeted organizations in an impossible situation. If they don't give in to the attacker's demands, the attackers will publish stolen data and the organization will have to report the breach to the relevant national or international data privacy watchdog. This, in turn, could result in large fines for the organization. And, either way, the organization is likely to have to pay to get out of the situation. One example of double extortion appeared in New Year's Eve 2020. 
A threat group called Revil launched an attack on Travelex, downloading 5 gigabytes of sensitive customer data from its network, including dates of birth, credit card information, and social security numbers. Revil gave Travelex two days to pay $6 million, following which the ransom amount would be doubled. They also threatened to sell the entire database if they didn't receive the payment within a week. Travelex had to go offline for a few weeks to recover from the attack. This is the message their customers received when trying uh, unsuccessfully to use Travelex services. Trend number four is the ever-growing threat to mobile devices. Mobile security is a top concern for most organizations, especially these days, and for a good reason. While working from home, employees are increasingly using their mobile devices to access corporate data. This means that your organization is now exposed to data breaches more than ever. Just recently, Checkpoint Research discovered over 400 vulnerabilities in one of Qualcomm Technologies chipsets, a chip that is embedded in over 40% of the mobile phone market. That includes high-end phones from Google, Samsung, LG, Xiaomi, OnePlus, and more. Attackers can exploit these vulnerabilities to turn employees' mobile devices into the perfect spying tool, render the mobile phone unresponsive, or insert hidden and unremovable malware. In today's new reality, any type of attack that can get to the PC or network can and will probably also get to the mobile device. If in the past only advanced attackers had access to sophisticated tools such as mobile ransomware, today it's not that uncommon as these tools are offered on the darknet. Moreover, threat actors have been seeking new infection vectors in the mobile world changing and improving their techniques to avoid detections in places such as official app stores. For example, in one innovative type of attack, hackers used a large international corporate mobile device management MDM, system to distribute malware to more than 75% of its managed mobile devices. Trend number five is about the infrastructure. It's important to note that the infrastructure itself is indeed vulnerable. For example, the open-source Apache Guacamole Remote Desktop Gateway is a critical IT solution that enables employees with a safe remote connection to the corporate network. It's very popular, and there have been over 10 million Docker downloads worldwide. But Guacamole isn't tamper-proof. Just last month, Checkpoint researchers found that some of Guacamole's ingredients didn't meet the required security standards. Specifically, they found that it was susceptible to several critical reverse RDP vulnerabilities and could be affected by multiple new vulnerabilities found in free RDP. In fact, all versions of Guacamole that were uh, released before January 2020 were found to be using vulnerable versions of free RDP. These vulnerabilities enable hackers or any threat actor who successfully compromises a computer inside the organization to launch an attack through the Guacamole gateway when an unsuspecting employee connects to their infected machine. Once in control of the gateway, the attacker can eavesdrop on all incoming sessions, record all user credentials, and even start new sessions to control the rest of the computers within the organization. When most of the organization is working remotely, the foothold can be translated into full control over the entire network. So, that was our summary of all cyber attacks that are driven by the global interest in COVID-19 and the all-encompassing move to remote work. And while the global transition to remote work is a necessity in these tough times of the coronavirus pandemic, and will continue to be so as we move to the post-pandemic era, we must not ignore the security mandate of this new reality. To help you understand the steps you need to take and the capabilities you need to have in place, we invite you to watch the next seven videos in our eight-part series and learn how you can secure your remote workforce in the new normal. As for next time, stay tuned for episode number two, where we'll discuss the top three principles of a secure remote workforce strategy that ensures reliable connections, rapid scaling, and business productivity. In the meantime, to learn more about all the recent cyber threats that might impact your business in today's new normal, I invite you to download our white paper, Cyber Attack Trends 2020, a mid-year report by Checkpoint Research. Here!